Welcome back to Know Your Developers, a series where we take a behind-the-scenes look at the men and women responsible for some of our favorite games and try to learn more about them. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is finally upon us, and that makes it the perfect time to take a look at the people responsible for gaming's biggest crossover ever. Three different studios have worked on the series over the years, but each project was helmed by the same director, Masahiro Sakurai. Sakurai is, without a doubt, the face of Smash Bros. development, and is one of Nintendo's rock star personalities. To many, there is no Smash without Sakurai, and the passion and care he gives each entry of the franchise is irreplaceable. Making a Smash game is a daunting task, but it's a task Sakurai rises to meet time and time again. And again. And again. I wonder if I'll ever get to take a break. I'm Matt Zawadniak, and you're watching NWR TV. This is Know Your Developers, Episode 8, Masahiro Sakurai. Sakurai wasn't always destined for game development. When he was young, he started studying electrical engineering at a specialist high school. He believed that people who were experts in their field had the power to make people happy and make the world a better place. Sakurai wanted to develop skills that would make a real difference in his career. But once he started taking actual classes, he realized that he didn't enjoy what he was doing. He found himself thinking, at the end of the day, what do I really want to do? Eventually, he decided on a new goal get a job making video games. He left his engineering school to attend a regular high school and began thinking about how he could become a game developer. He believed that he could learn more efficiently by doing, rather than studying. Throughout high school, he played as many video games as possible, not just to have fun, but also to think about why video games are fun. Shortly after graduating, he was hired by HAL Laboratories, working under the eventual president of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata. At HAL, Sakurai began directing his very first video game. One of his core tenets in the game's design was to develop a game that would be very simple. He felt that games could be too complex for beginners because of how many buttons there were on a controller. His initial proposal was to make a game that could be played with only one button. A simple game needed an appropriate main character though. So, at the age of only 19, Sakurai came up with the right formula for making the hero the game needed. First, you draw a circle. Then you dot the eyes. Add a great big smile, and presto. It's Kirby. Although it didn't truly end up being a one-button game, Kirby's Dream Land released for the Game Boy on April 27, 1992. It was a huge success for HAL, selling over 5 million copies and becoming their biggest release yet. The Kirby franchise would continue to be a staple of HAL's lineup, but Sakurai found his interests drifting towards something a little more intense. In February of 1991, Street Fighter II was released to arcades, and Sakurai was enraptured by the multiplayer arcade cabinet. He was amazed by the design of the cabinet that prevented a player from seeing their opponent, creating a tense and exciting experience that he described as groundbreaking. Sakurai would become an avid fan of fighting games, winning a 100-person Street Fighter tournament and regularly going on 50-game win streaks. But one day, he ended up in a match that changed his view on competitive gaming. While playing King of Fighters 95 at an arcade, Sakurai found himself in a match with a stranger that he couldn't see on the other side of the arcade cabinet. He easily took the first two rounds, and started to get suspicious of how poorly his opponent was playing. When he took a peek at the other side of the cabinet, he found a young woman who was trying the game out with her boyfriend. Immediately, Sakurai's heart sank. This woman had no idea what she was doing, and he had just mercilessly defeated her. He started to question if he was doing the right thing. Had he inadvertently convinced her never to play the game again because she was so hopelessly outmatched? After this day, he pulled away from competitive fighting games. Games were supposed to be fun. Sakurai felt awful that he had turned a game that he loved into an excruciating experience for someone else. He started to wonder if it was possible to make a fighting game that was easy for newcomers to pick up and play, setting him down the path that would solidify his legacy. By 1996, Sakurai had released three successful Kirby games, but he was submitting plenty of proposals and prototypes to Nintendo, who had become HAL's exclusive publisher. One of these proposals was for a new kind of fighting game where, instead of trying to deplete your opponent's health, you would try to knock them off a stage to fall to their death. As players took damage, they would become lighter and easier to knock around. This prototype was named Kokuto Gimu Ryo, or 
Dragon King The Fighting Game. Though Dragon King showed promise, Nintendo rejected the proposal in favor of an action-adventure game that he had also submitted. Hoping to release HAL's first Nintendo 64 game by the following Christmas, Sakurai was worried about the amount of time it would take to develop an action-adventure game. The team at HAL believed that Dragon King had potential, but they needed a hook to sell Nintendo on the idea. When they considered the popular roster's other fighting games like Street Fighter and Tekken had at the time, they came to one conclusion a battle royale between Nintendo's all-star heroes. Of course, they didn't wait for Nintendo's permission before developing a prototype. A team of HAL's staff, led by Sakurai and Mr. Iwata, got to work on the first demo of Super Smash Bros hoping to make a good first impression to Shigeru Miyamoto. They wanted to impress Mr. Miyamoto with the work that they had done without help from Nintendo Studios, so they spent time making sure every fighter was faithful to the character that they were representing. In Iwata's words, If we thought, this isn't Mario, then that's a problem. On the other hand, if we created something really amazing and got them to incorporate it into one of their own games, there's no way to know for sure if we'd be able to have Mario retain any of those new characteristics in future Mario games. In the end, Sakurai and Iwata's team managed to convince Miyamoto, and Super Smash Bros. was officially put into full production, eventually releasing in April 1999, ironically missing its targeted Christmas release date. Of course, it wouldn't be long until a sequel was in development. Only three months after Super Smash Bros. release, Sakurai had already submitted a proposal for a new Smash game for Nintendo's upcoming console, the GameCube. A quick turnaround for the proposal ended up foreshadowing a quick turnaround for the game's development. Super Smash Bros. Melee for GameCube would be developed entirely within 13 months. The pressure was immense. While the original Super Smash Bros. was an untested idea that wasn't guaranteed to succeed, Melee was tasked with following up a massive hit. Sakurai was dedicated to making his new project better than its predecessor in every way, and that goal would lead to a grueling year. For 13 months, he didn't take a single day off, regularly working 40-hour shifts with only 4 hours of sleep in between. Sakurai would later describe this as a really destructive lifestyle, and at one point he was so exhausted that he collapsed at work and had to be sent to the hospital. His hard work paid off though. Super Smash Bros. Melee was better than its predecessor in every way, going on to be the best-selling game in the GameCube's entire library. Melee continues to see incredible success to this day, with a dedicated competitive tournament community still turning out to events, including seven years at EVO, with 1,354 entrants in EVO 2018. Despite the game's ongoing legacy, Sakurai still has regrets about it. The high-speed competitive nature of Melee ended up going against his mission to make a fighting game that was highly accessible for all players, especially beginners. The Pendulum would eventually swing the other way with his next chance at a Smash game, but that wouldn't be for several more years, as Sakurai had other plans now. In an August 2003 edition of his regular column in Famitsu Magazine, Sakurai announced that he would be leaving HAL Laboratories. Though he still got along with and cared about Iwata and his other colleagues, he felt that he wouldn't be able to keep making the kinds of games he wanted to make without a change in environment, and working with other content creators would allow him new opportunities and experiences. Sakurai would never be formally employed by Nintendo or HAL again. Next time on Know Your Developers, Sakurai develops his first game as a free agent, but he wouldn't stay away from Nintendo for long. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Nintendo World Report TV to know when Know Your Developers returns and see plenty more Nintendo-related content. You can also visit our website at nintendoworldreport.com or join the conversation in our Discord server with the link in the description. If you want to support this channel and the site while getting exclusive or early access to great content, check out patreon.com slash nwr. I'm Matt Zawodniak, and we'll be back soon with more Know Your Developers.